Okay, so I'm going to tell you those five foods, but let me okay. first say one more thing to set this up. Our body, to stay alive, makes 10,000 genetic mistakes every single day. Each mistake, each of those mistakes can lead to a microscopic cancer. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. We will learn from Dr. William Lee, a renowned expert on nutrition and health. Join me to discuss the powerful role of foods in supporting our circulatory system. Together, we'll explore the science behind specific foods that can help improve blood flow, reduce inflammation, and promote overall cardiovascular health. As a special bonus, we have included some delicious recipes which contain ingredients to stem cancer. Oh. A quick favor, we'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. How do we know that we actually have microscopic cancers? Because we're not all walking around like filled with tumors, are we? Well, actually, this has been studied. In autopsy wow. studies of women who died of not cancer, but car accidents, uh, you know, suicide, violence, 40% uh, 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 of women between the ages of 40 and 50 at autopsy are found to have these tiny little harmless microscopic breast cancers. 40%. 50% of men, 50% of men between the ages of 50 and 60, 50%, half, have microscopic cancers in their prostate. If, if this is from autopsy studies, if they died of something else, car accident or whatever, okay, and in people who are 70 or older, okay, 100% of those people have microscopic thyroid cancers that are so small, so harmless, so dormant, it'll never kill them, okay, they die of something else. And so the fact is, we already know that walking around, we all have little microscopic cancers. And by the way, this is changing our own definition of cancer as the scary disease. Because look, what I just told you, Sarah, is like cancer is cancer at its very origin, at its beginning. It's kind of like a pimple. If you see it on your face when you're looking in the mirror, you're washing your face, you're going to be focused on it. You're going to want to do something about it. But you know what? We've all got pimples growing on our backs and on, the, on our butts that we don't actually see every day. And they, they're not a problem. And eventually our mm -hmm. body, our skin will regenerate and take care of it. And we'll never even know you had the problem. And that's really what the issue with cancer is. So what can we actually do to tip, using nutrition, to tip our uh uh, uh, to tip the chances that we can actually prevent the cancer through food, through mm. nutrition. And this mm. is actually what you're asking. Like, what are some, what are five, there are hundreds of foods, by the way, but what are, what are some top five I can come up with? Um, and I'll try to give you some of their doses as well. All right. Because yes, dose please. is important, food doses. So tomato, we already went to one, Toma tomatoes. Tomatoes Cooked. have been shown to lower, well, actually regular tomatoes as well, but oh, cooked tomatoes especially. Okay. Remember, cooking makes it just a lot better, but eating regular tomatoes is good. So, But the dose of cooked tomatoes is eating one serving, each serving being half a cup full of cooked tomatoes two to three times a week uh, for, for trying to protect against prostate cancer. Um, mm -hmm. About the same for decreasing the risk of breast cancer by about 25%. Okay, one food. Wow. An another food, green tea. Now, there's all kinds of stuff about <laughs> green tea. We all know it's green tea. It's the... Look, look. <laughs> I have a background. It really reminds me of you. Every time ah. I make a green tea, I think of you. Well, listen, my great uncle lived to 104, <laughs> mentally sharp, well. independent, and he attributed his longevity, you know, uh, to, to really living at the foothills of a tea mountain, a mountain that grew tea, and he drank tea continuously. But the research has shown, both in the lab and in, in clinical studies, that drinking somewhere between two to four cups of green tea per day actually lowers your risk of lung cancer, colorectal cancer, stomach cancer, pretty substantially, all right? And that's a good thing. So tomatoes, mm -hmm. green tea. Another one uh, that, that has been shown to be beneficial, some people might be surprised to hear this, soy foods, not processed soy, not you know, not not artificial, not 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 synthetic stuff. 
but actual soy. I'm not talking about plant-based meats. I'm talking about real tofu, tempeh, uh, you know, uh, soy milk, uh, that kind of mm. stuff. And there, uh, there's hundreds of kinds of soy foods in Asia. All right. You go to any Asian grocery store. If you look around, you'll see a myriad of choices of soy foods. If you go to Asia, I guarantee, like if you're from the Western world, you go to Asia for the first time, you're going to be overwhelmed at how many different kinds of choices you have with soy foods. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and soy foods, soy has been shown to reduce the risk of breast cancer. Okay. This was what was in my mind when I was thinking, what cancer? Can I ask before you explain mm. why to see if I if my thought process is right here? Is that more in women that are perimenopausal or menopausal because their estrogen levels drop and having soy has got high estrogen in and so it maybe replaces that? I don't know. That's just a concept that's coming to my brain when you it, said soy. It, it, I could be it, really it, off the it, mark. It, it, it's, the, it's, it's the right idea, um, but let me kind of clarify it for you. So it turns out that, well, first of all, an urban legend is that all women should stay away from soy because... Uh, soy has estrogen and some forms of human breast cancer are sensitive to estrogen so dangerous to actually eat soy totally wrong totally wrong all right in in, in china in japan in vietnam in thailand breast cancer is out there too and i guarantee you if women are diagnosed with breast cancer in asia they are not told to stay away from soy in fact they're told to eat mm -hmm. more soy and here's the reason mm -hmm. why it, uh, 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 oh, uh, that um, soy does have a plant estrogen called phytoestrogen. One of them is called mm -hmm. genistein. And uh, mm. again, where did the where did the urban legend come from? Look, some well-meaning soul uh, uh, knew that breast cancers are sensitive to estrogen sometimes, and they saw phytoestrogen, and they're like, "Hmm, well, I best I." best stay away from soy then and then use whatever communication medium to spread that urban legend around and now everybody believes it even oncologists believe it to believe to be honest to be honest with you like even doctors are repeating this urban legend but here's the thing if you are a scientist and you look at the actual chemical structure of uh, human estrogen in breast cancer and then you look at the phytoestrogen chemical structure they don't look anything alike and in fact, mm. plant estrogens block human estrogen. So the soy estrogen is like tamoxifen. It's mother nature's tamoxifen. It blocks the effects of estrogen. So this is why, uh, 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 and, and by the way, the, 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 the genistein in soy also cuts off the blood supply feeding breast cancers. All right? So you get a wow. double-barreled effect. So a study of 5,000 women in China looked at the highest risk women and these are women who already have breast cancer and found that those women who consume the most soy products not mm -hmm. processed soy but soy products um uh, uh actually had a 30 percent lower risk of dying of their breast cancer 30 three zero okay and if you were a woman who already had surgery and radiation and chemo and you know you were out and you know like uh, you're in remission and just waiting for that five-year mark kind of thing. Um, if you, those women who had the most soy had a 30% reduction in their breast cancer coming back. All right? Wow. Cancer starving, estrogen blocking, you know, all these other things as, as well. Now, um, uh, and so this is where, you know, having parts of the right information and trying to put them together is okay, but you got to double check it you know, for people who really understand the science. So, um, so I just gave you some clinical data showing mm -hmm. reduction of risk, re re reduction of mortality. This was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Um, and, but you know, some some critics, some skeptics say, you know, that's one study. Sure, let me let me see mm -hmm. another study. Well, I don't have one other study. I've got fourteen other studies that <laughs> all show the same thing. In no case is soy consumption associated with worse outcome in every case it's associated with better outcome and yet there's this urban Amazing. legend around going around like the same anti-nutrient story that you were talking about this is why yeah. podcasts like this you know youtube things like this and you know people who write books like me and you you know like that's why we have the responsibility to be able to mm. try to communicate with clarity you know mm -hmm. uh, the the 
what it is that we do know, right? Because mm-hmm. I think otherwise, it's the, remember I told you this, like the, the Dunning-Kruger effect, you know, everybody starts to think they're an expert in this stuff, and they're not. Yeah, it's true. I can, and this is why I started the show, because I was so fed up of hearsay around medical advice. And so I thought, let's just bring every top physician on here and let's just have the conversation so people can actually figure out what that's right for them as an individual who's got their own genetic makeup and they can make their own decision. And that's why we did the show for this exact so, so, reason. So I got two more foods to give you. I gave yes. you um, tomatoes, I gave you so- green tea, I gave you soy. Um, uh, I'll give you another uh, food that is I think uh, uh, quite important is blueberries. Blueberries Mm -hmm. actually um, uh, amplify our immunity. Uh, The anthocyanins that give blueberries their beautiful dark blue, black color, uh, actually cut off the blood supply to cancers. But at the same time, they also enhance our immunity. And what we now know is that our immune system, uh, cutting off the blood supply, prevents the cancers from growing up. Remember what I told you, your immune system wipes them out. So you mm-hmm. really want that. Blueberries are small but powerful. They're like totally good. And by the way, if you can't get fresh blueberries uh, all year long, no problem. Frozen blueberries are also mm. equally good. So, okay, mm-hmm. so uh, that's uh, number four. And then I'll actually tell you that um, uh, 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 sort of the cl- the class of fruits like apples and pears are also beneficial. Uh, they are great sources of bioactives like chlorogenic acid. What does chlorogenic acid do in the lab? Cuts off the blood supply to cancers. But both of both uh, ap- uh, and it's also antiandrogenic. Also starves off the blood supply, but the, but and, and, uh, and improves immunity. Uh, but the dietary fiber in these foods also activate our gut health. They improve our gut health. Our gut, well-fed gut bacteria lowers inflammation. They release the short-chain fatty acids, I'm sure you talked about before yeah. on your show. But the other thing they do is uh, that a well-fed uh, gut microbiome also directly nudges the immune system to say, hey, go out there and go get them uh, and, and wipe out those cancer cells, those microscopic mm. ones, okay? And so... I would say this would be five foods that, by the way, are available anywhere, in a grocery store, inexpensively, right, Uh, uh, that that are delicious, and you can find Mm. different ways to cook it. Now, I didn't have time to talk about the bok choy, the shiitake mushrooms, about the garlic. I didn't talk about red onions. You know, uh, I didn't talk about rutabaga. There's a whole bunch of these other foods. And, you know, I write about, I make these whole lists in my books, Eat to Beat Disease and Eat to Beat Your Diet. And the, and the whole idea is that I think it's wonderful news that we're now beginning to understand that the foods that have been uh, used in, uh, by different cultures for hundreds of years, generations, these foods, like the one you just showed, you held up, actually Yeah, I was trying are, to show. They're delicious and, and you can find something good. And, and by the way, this is mm-hmm. the other thing. People go, man, what if I don't like blueberries or what if I don't like apples? It's okay. You can easily swap mm-hmm. them out with some other food that's on there. Mm-hmm. And so this is part of the fun of making healthy choices. This is not hard. It's easy. Uh, you know, you just have to be selective, right? I mean, you know, like people out there, you're listening to this. I'm, I'm sure at some point in your life, you know, you discovered that you wouldn't just date anybody, but you would wanted to be selective of who you spent your, who you took to the movies. That right? is important, you, by the way. Right, yes, right? it's a very important decision. <laughs> who you spend your time with also affects your health. <laughs> exactly. So why would, you, why would it be any more difficult to choose healthy food? Mm-hmm. And I, I want people to start thinking about things like that way. Making healthy yeah. food choices is like making healthy date choices. That's brilliant. The following are five great recipes incorporating anti-cancer ingredients. One, Here's the recipe. One, tomato soybean stir fry, sot diced tomatoes and tofu cubes in a pan with garlic and ginger. Add a splash of soy sauce and a sprinkle of green tea powder. Serve over brown rice. Two, blueberry pear smoothie, 
blend blueberries, pears, a scoop of soy protein powder, and a cup of green tea. Add a splash of water or almond milk for desired consistency. 3. Tomato Soybean Soup Simmer diced tomatoes, tofu, and dried shiitake mushrooms in vegetable broth. Season with soy sauce, miso paste, and a pinch of green tea leaves. For apple blueberry salad with soybeans, toss diced apples, blueberries, and cooked soybeans in a vinaigrette made with olive oil, soy sauce, and a squeeze of lemon. 5. Green tea infused pear and tomato salad. Drizzle a pear and tomato salad with green tea infused dressing made by steeping green tea leaves in olive oil and vinegar. Next, watch the Dr. William Lee Club playlist for more information on the anti cancer diet. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.